Hello guys. I uh, got a fan going in here. I'm in a hot tropical climate, so now most of you are in a cold climate. Uh, oh, how I long to be in the cold, and oh, how I'm sure you long to be in the hot or warm. Um, as I put out in a video the, yesterday or the day before, you know, I've put out quite a few videos. First thing I want to do, well, as I told, told, said in the previous video, uh, I'm going to start putting probably one a day, one every other day, truth telling video out because uh, from a family with a strong father in it to the fatherless world out here. That's what most of it's going to center in on. It's going to center on the lack of God uh, in families today. It's going to center in on a lot of stuff. Racial issues, uh, what's going on with gender changing. I mean, we're just going to talk about a lot of stuff. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it is because nobody can get down on it like I can. And I get down on it like I can going into this aspect of it. And this aspect of it is this channel is not monetized. Uh, we just surpassed 7,500 subscribers. We have well in excess of uh, 2 million views. And we don't have a lot of views on, on videos. Um, uh, well, we're approach, approaching 3 million views. And you go and you look through, you'll see that videos get 20, 30, 40, some of them 10 or 15 views and uh, we want to keep it that way because we're we're interested in quality not quantity and we want to talk to people that want to learn something and this channel is geared really more specifically although we have older uh, most of our viewers are older as a matter of fact most of our viewers uh, in that age graphing bar or in their 50s and 60s uh, we love you and we thank we're thankful that you're here and maybe that's the best way maybe that's who needs to be watching this channel because maybe the older uh, fellas will pick up on something and say well this is right I'm gonna go talk to my family about this or talk to other young fellas about this so, and that's the whole drive behind stuff. Uh, today's video, uh, I want to talk about a segment that I saw from the Jesse Lee Peterson show. I'll, I'll look for the video and I'll try to link the video in the description box or the uh, pinned comment section or both. Uh, and he had a gay guy on there that come out and was honest about the answers of why he thought he was gay. And this is the reason why people are gay. You're not born that way. Uh, that's a myth. And God has a beautiful way of maybe it, maybe it takes some time. But it, all the lies are brought to the surface and are available to be seen for the lies they are. The problem is, is that people don't choose to go look. look. Uh, they choose to just listen to the majority of the mouths, but they don't, they don't want to look at the truth and the science and this and that and the other. Uh, that's the biggest problem. Uh, but they kill the... the Gay, the gay rights, the community, whatever you want to call it, they've killed off their theory that 
you can't help it. You're just born that way. And I'm going to give you the prime example of that. Um, if you're just born that way, then why all of a sudden are 8, 10, 12, 14, 16-year-olds being encouraged to go get uh, castrated and a little boy turned into a little girl or a little girl turned into a little boy if they just found out going through puberty that that's what the deal is. I mean, which is it? Now, um, this guy on the Jesse Lee Peterson show, that this episode that I watched this morning, um, he truth told me. He said, I was molested by a man. He went on to talk about how uh, his mother sealed the deal with it because she was always effeminizing him. And he resented it. And this is the psychology that I'm only seeing on Jesse Lee Peterson. Again, a link will be put down there. Go subscribe to this guy. Uh, he makes 100% beautiful sense. Uh, there's no lies coming out of this guy's mouth. It's just factual. And the psychology that he points out on a daily basis is that people become what they resent uh, while growing up. And he resented his mother and he became his mother. And there was a good candid conversation on that. I didn't get to see the whole conversation, but it was the big, bold, beautiful truth that I did get to see. And now I want to talk about uh, fatherless families uh, might, and I'm talking a, a fatherless family w would be a family without a daddy around uh, a family where the daddy's passed away uh, a family where a daddy's there all the time but is absent he's in the house but he's absent it's a whole host of ways uh an effeminate daddy. Uh, you might as well, you, you don't have a daddy around if you've got an effeminate one. Uh, and there are no families that have fathers where there are women ruling the house and ruling the family functions. So you may have a dad around, but you could still be in a fatherless family. And in these families um, and predominantly hitting African-American families more than any any African society in any country or in Africa itself than anywhere in the world. This is exclusive uh, that it has more per capita in the African-American community and I'm, I'm not just solely picking that community out. I'm just picking it out because we see that more on a daily basis. And it's per capita more of a percentage of their population than it would be any other population of any other race, ethnicity, religion, or anything like that. Now, I want to start it by mentioning the white one because they, they exist in the white communities or I don't think there's no such thing as a community. I, I don't. The community, the community, whatever. But uh, we're going over here to, uh, we're going to generalize it and stereotype it. And we're going to do it on both ways, black and white. You go over here to the, there's a rundown trailer park full of rednecks over here. And most of them, the, the ones that are drinking or drugging, they either have a crazy alcoholic dad, but he's not a father. He's just a man in the house. 
stays drunk all the time, or you don't have a dad in the house, you simply don't have one, and you got a crazy white mother who will go off, slam up in your face, uh, type generally has tattoos all over them, uh, and is what she portrays to be, and is what she marks herself up with. Trash. Okay. Time to, uh, is there enough carnage going on around you yet that you can tell the truth about stuff? A lot of times you should be judging a book by its cover. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of the time you should. Uh, kids out there, they got guns. They're doing dope. They're breaking into all the other trailers. They're breaking into the cars in the trailer park. Slashing tires. If you ain't got it nailed down to the floor, those kids are going to walk off with it. And then you got the project community, which would be the black, the, the black projects. And you got the same shit going on. It just looks a little different. The same thing. Got crazy ass mama. And these mamas typically look like they have more testosterone running through them than an adult female gorilla or hyena. You know, both the white mom and the black mom. And these kids are raised up and they come up, both black and white, and they become whom they resent the most. That crazy mother. Now, just think of all the terms you can think of that in. A woman don't want to listen to a man. A woman that lives in a rundown thing and can't have the man in the house because she has never been with the man that would really support her. Any event, she did have a man that would support her and her children. She didn't want it. She wanted to be the boss lady. Uh, and a whole host of other different things. Uh, most of them can't find a man that wants them. Maybe want a one night stand with them, but don't want to spend no time with them. Who wants to hang around with women like that other than trashy males? I mean, who does? So you got all these boys projecting these mothers and becoming these emotional nightmares that they resent. Well, who? Huh. What in the world are you talking about, old man? What in the hell? Uh, see, we were taught in school, uh, we were shown films about physical child abuse, for example. And they would show where a parent would put a cigarette out on a, on a teenager, for example. You know, Scratch scars, different things. Uh, and they would always stress the kids that grow up being abused need extra help because they're the ones that's going to grow up being abusers. And little Johnny and little James or little Tyrone's and little Anisha's mom and dad or mom or dad or both that abused them were abused themselves, see? So just, just digest that. And those little abused kids grow up becoming who they resent most. That's all of us. I picked up so many bad qualities uh, during my childhood because you're always going to see good and bad in your parents. And I often tell my son, take the good with you, son. Throw the bad baggage that I got or that you see from your mama, throw it in the depths of the sea and put it in an incinerator and burn it to ashes and get away from it. 
uh, because we all have good and bad with us. But typically, everything the kid sees that the kid resents is what the kid turns into. Uh, now, just think about that. I could bring up instances after instances. In my, not my family, not me, my wife, or my stepdaughter, or my son, Joe. But extended, my kin, I, I see that all over the place. We all became what we were resenting. Uh, and it's sad. And those folks are producing little children that they've become what they resented and are producing the offspring and it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. There's a few, they think they've changed it, but they, they haven't changed it. They go from one terribly evil thing over to another evil thing. And this is all families. I'm not saying my families, particularly uh, my, you know, my siblings and things and cousins or aunts or uncles did anything that nothing was no more wrong as going on with, with any of your families, even if you're considered great families. I'm just saying they'll pick up the bad. And the more bad there is with the mom and the dad, the more bad the kid's going to be. That's why you got to trash trailer parks over here on the one side, the no goods, the malcontents, and you got it down there in the projects when the no goods and the malcontents. And until honesty is mentioned about that, until good men go up and tell these, because generally it's a bad mother, uh, that's producing all this, not all the time, but but the monumental amount of the time, it's a, a absent or no good father and an emotional woman that creates the emotional instability in her children that just sets off bombs of emotional instability. These are the people you see freaking out at the line at McDonald's that goes crazy over a damn order of french fries and freaks the hell out and gets locked up over an order of french fries. A dollar or two dollar order of french fries. They'll go to jail for 30 days to six months. Tear up everything in the damn store. Sometimes they go to jail for six years over that. Sometimes, uh, in the case of a family thing, and I believe it was in a town, it was in Tampa or Orlando area, I believe. Um, these two little black guys, one's 15, one's 14. Mom knows they're one's holding a 40 caliber pistol, one has a 45, and these kids are, have been running around, uh, 14 and 15 year olds. Uh, criminal history a mile long. One of the kids gets pissed off that the other brother was getting more for Christmas than he was. You want to talk about spoil? Really? Racism? Uh, little black boy killing his black older black sister and could have killed his 11-month-old uh, little niece without no thought, blowing up emotionally. His big sister said, cut it out, we're at grandma's house. Her reward was a bullet in the chest and her lungs filling up with blood and her suffocating in her grandmother's front yard. And had her little baby not been in a carrier, a car carrier pull out thing, baby would probably be dead. That little black boy didn't give a shit. Is what he wanted right then, right there at that moment. And all he had seen was a crazy as hell mama and a crazy as hell grandma. See, and until we start addressing all this mess and being factual that the problem that stems 
all the problems is, a, is not having a strong father around. And until that's addressed, these problems are going to keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. Now, meanwhile, over in China, over there in the Mideast, uh, down in Africa, all in Russia, all the Eastern nations uh, are sitting back laughing at the West imploding on itself because nobody will stand up and tell the truth because they, they've made women gods in the West. They've made homosexual a god religion in the West. Every type of debauchery known to man is the religion in the West. And good men like me, and maybe like you, we're not speaking up. Um, so I've made a strategic decision and a purposeful decision to run my mouth until I die over issues like this because I personally don't give a damn what you're what you think personally about me. Number one, it's not going to ever affect me. It's just not. Uh, number two, uh, what are you going to do about it? And number three, I can't help that you can't handle the truth. You can't help that. So I would encourage all men, it's, it's now time to stand up. The authority, there's only one structure for authority, and it goes like this. There is God, there is the husband, there is the wife, and there is the children. And there's no other order to follow. It's not 60-40, the daddy and the mama. It's not 50-50, the mama and the daddy. It's not... What, what it's turned in to be today for poor folk, 100% mother. Uh, it's not none of that. God's order, his natural order, is for God, the daddy, the mother, and the children. There's no variation of that. God 100%. The... Man is to serve God the hundred percent. The woman is to serve the husband one hundred percent. The children are to serve the mother and the father one hundred percent, with the dad being the head of that. There's no other order. There's no other way it's gonna work. There's no other way that ever has worked. And all these families I see, so I'm sure they're all that you're seeing, and you're just lying or you've been deceived by them. Uh, families that, where the mother's rolling the roost, where the dad's playing the second fiddle, I show you weak, emotionally bent, twisted, emotional time bomb children that can't handle anything. Those are the kids that will run and abort a baby in a second because it don't fit what they're doing at the moment. When they, when they got some class to them, maybe they have some money. Uh, those are the ones that will get out here and kill somebody over or order of french fries. Uh, emotional wrecks just in different ways. But you show me a fatherless family, and I'll show you a trashy family. And just will. Now, have the God given sense enough to know that if you're in a family and your father has died, uh, that's a way big different prospect than mama being over here and don't want a man around her and got two or three kids living in the house with her and trying to rule everything and using this man that's supposed to be the authority of the family as a damn billfold, shit like that. Producing the trashiest of the trash of society 
And the sad thing about it is I see these mothers. It's always these mothers. I don't know what. I did everything I could for my kids. No, you didn't. You you destroyed your children. That's exactly what you did. You don't need to go to a psychologist over here. By the way, psychology has, has produced all this. Uh, all this Sigmund Freud bull mess. Uh, this German uh, hoisted upon us uh, by the Rockefeller uh, medical societies, hoisted upon us, and all that bull hockey and that crap designed to make money is hogwash. You'd have to be a damned fool to go get into psychiatry or psychology with the intentions that you're going to help people. You can, uh, but you're going to be ostracized from that very field itself, like Jordan Peterson. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be talked to, sit and just lie and discover the feelings and rouse the emotions that much more and learn how to dope people up and keep them doped up and not facing anything, not really fixing anything. So, woe be unto the doctors and the lawyers. Woe be unto them. Doctor makes more profit the more sick you are, the more unhealthy you and your family are. There's no church to run to any longer. Um, We are not to forsake the, the assembly of ourselves with one another, but the problem is uh, folks aren't t discerning the Bible enough to know this was a season for this, this was a season for this, Jesus came, this has been a season, and now we're at the end season where the Bible itself says the church will have a great falling away. We're there. It's nowhere to go. So, and fatherless families has been created by design. You break the family, and it's all satanic. You break the family down, and God's guaranteed not to be in the family because the Lord is not going to be coming in blessing families that are refusing to follow his order while a woman filled with a Jezebel spirit is ruling the roost in there. It just doesn't happen. Uh, Satan may reward the family with a better family car because they're going down to the church of Satan down there, a fake false Jesus church. Uh, God will give y'all, uh, the Satan will give y'all the possessions and worldly things you want to keep you down and to get your family and your children and your grandchildren's souls. And that's what's happening. So, uh, wake up to the fact that uh, you want a bad child, get the father out of the way. Just get the father out of the way. Uh, you want a bad child, have a weak man, a beta man, not a real man, be the father of that family, a little, a little weasel, a little malcontent. And the little boys will grow up to be effeminate like the father. If they've got an effeminate father. Uh, and that would be any father that's not ruling his family and providing the right and proper structure for his family. Nobody wants to hear it because nobody likes discipline. They love the fruits that come along with the discipline. But then it's always, well, it's because this one's white or this one's Asian or uh, this one's black or this one's gold. Uh, they had the advantages and I didn't. You won't blame those people. When the fact of the matter is, is that they had godly discipline. But then again, God's not into handing out Cadillacs and four-bedroom houses. 
He is into storing treasures up into heaven for folk, though. So, folks, just get to thinking about what's going on in this world. Um, I'm not too confident we're going to get out of the 2020s here. I think we're right at the end. Uh, won't hurt my feelings, none in the least bit, if Jesus comes back in the next, this next second. As a matter of fact, I'll be the happier for it. Would you? If you're not a real, if you're not a real Christian, uh, you might be a fake and false, false phony one. Um, those kinds don't really want him to come back. They don't want the end to come. They cling into this evil earth. And God told us there'll be curses going down generations and generations. You keep crapping on your kids by not allowing fathers around and you'll, you'll get what you're asking for. So, and if you've grew up, let me tell you something. If you grew up in a fatherless house, work on yourself. Work on yourself. Do not become what you resent. Do not become that crazy woman that you lived with all while growing up. Do not become that weak, effeminate father that you lived with all while growing up. Work at it. There is normal out there. There is normal. The problem is they don't put normal online. They don't put normal on the TV. They don't make movies about normal. They just push all the filth out to you to where you think there's no hope, there's no way out. And I'm here to tell you with my king, uh, there's an easy way out. There is a way out. So with that, uh, I want to tell everybody, I hope the good Lord blesses my Christian brothers and sisters. And to the rest of you, if you get a knock at the door, answer it. And we hope everybody has a as great as possible 2024.